Mr Deputy Speaker, um, I've been in the building industry for 30 years uh, in a past life as a carpenter and joiner and a builder and uh, a building construction barrister. Um, I've seen pretty much uh, uh, the best and the worst of what goes on in the building industry. And I can say without any shadow of a doubt, Mr Deputy Speaker, that I too have been subjected to union thuggery um, uh, back when I was 19 years of age, when I was a first-year apprentice, uh, I was uh, being so productive uh, on my first day of work on a building site in Melbourne, I was told to slow down by these two big burly BLF blokes uh, as one drove his finger into my chest. Uh, I would have been about uh, uh, 70 kilos wringing wet, a bit different these days, unfortunately. But um, uh, the, the, there is and that's just one occasion where I was personally subjected to thuggery uh, on building sites around Australia. What this bill does is it seeks to return integrity to the building industry. And unlike uh, what those opposite might believe, um, on this side of the House, we're not against unions. And in fact, uh, the, the, um, uh, a previous speaker on behalf of the opposition uh, the member for Gorton uh, talked about uh, how uh, we are uh, against unions, against workers. That's totally false. We don't, uh, we don't, uh, we're not against unions, we're not against workers. We support workers. Uh, what we are against is unions that break the law. Nothing more, nothing less. There are good unions, there are bad unions. The CFMEU is a bad union. And I'll come to the evidence of that shortly. In fact, I'll come to it now. This is not Andrew Wallace, the federal member for Fisher, saying this. This is Justice Jessop. In July of 2016, when he said the CFMEU's record of non-compliance with legislation of this kind has now become notorious, that record ought to be an embarrassment to the trade union movement. Judge Jarrett, in the same month, said, the CFMEU has an egregious record of repeated and willful contraventions of all manner of industrial laws. Justice White, in April 2016, said the CFMEU's compliance with industrial legislation has generally been poor. Now, you might think that's the understatement of the year, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, he said the union's prior history bespeaks an attitude by the CFMEU of ignoring, if not defying, the law and a willingness to contravene it as and when it chooses. Uh, Judge Vasta said it would be apt to describe the behaviour of the first respondent, namely the CFMEU, as sheer thuggery. Such thuggery has no place in the Australian workplace. Contraventions of the Fair Work Act that involve such thuggery cannot uh, before be Before uh, the interruption, we were talking about the uh, fit and proper person test that the bill will provide for uh, uh, people who are office bearers in registered organisations. And, um, uh, the member for Gorton and the member for Bendigo, in their speeches, talked about how unfair it is for this bill to uh, enable the, the executive to be able, or the government to be able to take away a union's right to, as to who will lead it and, uh, and take away a, organize, a union's ability to be able to organise as to whether they merge. Well, clearly, Mr Deputy Speaker, I know it's a difficult concept, that concept of the, the separation of, of powers. I know that some people opposite don't understand that the government is actually separate from the federal court, but it is the federal court that decides whether someone should be disqualified or whether uh, a, uh, a two or more unions should be able to merge. Similarly, it is the federal court that should determine whether a union should be deregistered, which is the third aspect of this important bill. Now, uh, the bill will ensure the existing power of the federal court to deregister an organisation extends to situations where the organisation has repeatedly broken the law, if it's acted corruptly or committed serious criminal offences. Now, this is not the government that makes this call, Mr Deputy Speaker. I'm sure that you would know the difference between the government 
and the federal court, but sadly those opposite don't appear to understand that separation. So um, it is a, a very important distinction to make because it is, this is not the executive government saying that we will make those decisions. We are empowering the federal court to make that decision where it considers it appropriate. The existing deregistration provisions in the Registered Organisations Act have never been utilised, never, under the current law. Now, uh, the last deregistration to occur of a union occurred by former Labor Prime Minister Bob Hawke in 1986, when he had the guts and the intestinal fortitude to deregister the Builders Labourers Federation. Now, there's a far cry that, uh, under the leadership of Bob Hawke than the leadership of the current Labor Party under the leadership of the uh, Leader of the Opposition. Now, uh, he got up today, the Leader of the Opposition got up today after question time to say that he'd been misrepresented. Uh, now, he still did not have the, the willingness to stand up and condemn the atrocious behaviour uh, of CFMEU members telling uh, uh, workers at the, uh, the mine site that they would rape their children. He, not only did he not have the guts to uh, condemn that behaviour, he went and supported them that week. Uh, the member for Fell. Colleagues misleading the House. Uh, the uh, Leader of the Opposition stood up and made a, correct, uh, a, a statement at the end of question time in relation to that very point. Perhaps if the member stayed in the House a little longer instead of scurrying away after question time, he would have heard the explanation. In the House at the time, Mr Deputy Speaker, and uh, I stand by my comment. The Leader of the Opposition did not condemn it. He continues to take money from the CFMEU, uh, $3 million since he was the, appointed as the, uh, the leader of the Labor Party. Three, $3 million since he was appointed as the leader of the Labor Party. The member for Hunter. Re reluctant as I am, Mr Deputy Speaker, the member, I think inadvertently, uh, is suggesting the leader of the opposition is somehow personally taking money. Um, I think he's referring to campaign donations that the CFMU may or may not have made to the Labor Party. I don't know the facts, but I'll at least ask him to clarify that. Member for Fisher. Yes, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I'll, I accept that. The, uh, I did not intend to suggest that he's personally receiving $3 million, but $3 million has been donated to the Australian Labor Party under his, uh, under his leadership since he's been the leader of the ALP. Now, uh, <clears throat> there's absolutely no denying that the ALP is wholly owned under this leader of the opposition, wholly owned by the CFMEU. When the leader of the opposition, under his leadership, uh, the, uh, the ALPs received $3 million, the, it's uh, received uh, significantly more than that over the last 10 years. But uh, the, this Labor Party owes their political fortunes to the CFMEU, and that is why they continue to refuse to, uh, to call out this absolutely appalling behaviour. And if they won't do it, that's why we've got to introduce this bill to enable the federal court to call on uh, this atrocious behaviour from time to time. Not all union leaders do it, but uh, for those union leaders who will commit and continue to commit criminal offences, they should be disqualified uh, if the federal court considers it's an appropriate uh, course of action to take. I commend the bill.